If you live in the southeastern U.S., did you know that you probably have this invasive plant somewhere on your property? Today we're going to learn how to identify and treat this plant, and I'm talking about privet. It's science. Birds eating privet seeds is like eating McDonald's. They love to eat it, they'll eat a lot, and it runs right through them. Yep, this is all pri privet here, hold on. Almost all privet, here's a big one. All of this is privet. This is privet, this is privet, this is privet, this is privet, this is privet. It takes over these bottomland areas, completely crowds out native vegetation. Lots of research shows us that where there is privet, there is a lot less bees and butterflies and other really important pollinators. And that is one of the main reasons we're gonna talk about how to get rid of this privet. My name is Dave Coyle, and I've been working in forest health and invasive species for over 20 years now, the last decade or so down here in the southeast. My job is to help landowners and land managers deal with invasive species, manage their land. Most of the time, that means helping people get rid of invasive things. Privet's not good because it's just so tough. Like, it can grow anywhere in the sun, in the shade, bottomlands, uplands. I mean, you see the thing everywhere. You know, it used to be really promoted as a, a landscape plant, and there, people used to go around selling the stuff all over, like, hey, have a privet hedge, have a privet hedge. And that's all fine and dandy if you're gonna keep it trimmed up twice a year so it doesn't go to flower and set seeds, but too often these things go feral, I call them. When people leave, uh, the bushes just get big, the birds eat the berries, they fly around, they poop them out, and then we have privet everywhere at this point. So that's why, you know, every roadside, bottom land it's just full of this stuff and it is fairly tough to get rid of it can be done but it takes a sustained effort privet can be as small as this a bunch of little sprouts coming out of the ground or it can be this tall or it can be as big as this tree probably the best way to tell if you have privet on your property is look in the winter time december january february if you've got a field of green or a wall of green out there that is probably privet because privet keeps its leaves practically year-round Another way to tell if you have privet is to look at the plant itself. Now there's Chinese privet and Japanese privet. Both are super common. Both have opposite leaf patterns, so which means on this branch, those leaves come off directly across from each other. Japanese privet, the leaves are a little bit bigger, a little bit darker green. Chinese privet, which is the most common privet in the Southeast, it's what's all over here. The leaves are a tad smaller and they're a bit lighter green. Privet gets big tufts of white flowers, then these turn into these grayish or purplish colored berries or seeds in the fall. And these are those seeds, those berries that the birds eat and then take and spread privet all over the place. Now let's talk about three ways you can treat privet on your property. One way to remove privet on your property, hand pulling. Get a pair of gloves, walk out here and look at the privet you have. If you've got one that's growing from just one spot, it probably started from seed and if you're lucky, oh, you can pull the thing up. There it is. Dead, privet removed. Some of these get a little bit trickier. They don't come out quite as easily. Now this privet, you can see, came from another plant. There's a bigger root that was here. We're not gonna be able to pull this very easy, which means we're probably gonna need to use another option we'll talk about next, and that's herbicide. The reason we have these re-sprouts here from a plant that was here once is because it broke off or was cut off and herbicide was not used. If the top breaks off, the bottom's gonna re-sprout every time. Sometimes privet gets large. This is almost a tree. The best option for getting rid of this, cut it down. Now, we could just leave it like this. Got rid of the privet, right? Wrong. If we leave this, there's gonna be all sorts of sprouts coming up from here. What we need to do now is treat it with an herbicide. I use glyphosate. You could also use triclopyr. We just coat the top of that stem and that will kill the privet. And this is the last option foliar herbicide. Today I'm going to use glyphosate and what we do is we just coat the leaves of the privet. It's going to take a couple weeks but that chemical is going to soak into the leaves, go down to the root and kill the plant. Now the pros of this is you can cover a lot of ground fairly quickly. The cons of course are that glyphosate kills everything green. So if there are understory plants you want to keep and glyphosate gets on them, it's probably going to kill them. What glyphosate doesn't do is go through the bark of trees. So you can spray the bark of a tree, it's not gonna hurt a tree. If it gets on the leaves of a tree, it obviously will because those are green, right? But if you spray the bark, then it's gonna be okay. All the science shows that glyphosate is not harmful to people. The chemical glyphosate is formulated to impact a certain protein synthesis uh, pathway that is only found in plants, the shikimic acid pathway. So vertebrates do not have that in their system. We are vertebrates. 
we won't be affected by glyphosate. It's only the green plants that get affected by glyphosate. It's also extremely important to wear PPE. That's personal protective equipment. You'll notice I'm wearing my goggles. I'm wearing my rubber gloves, long sleeve shirt, pants, boots. I'm not out here in sandals or something. Keep covered up. When we get done, I'll go in, I'll take my gloves off, I'll put my clothes in the washer, and then I'll, keep, I'll do all I can to keep the chemical off of me. So when you use it appropriately, it's completely safe. So I'm just gonna walk in here. I, you never wanna spray and then walk through the spray that you just put down because then you're getting that chemical on yourself and it makes no sense, honestly. So I'm gonna step in here a little bit and I'm gonna spray and back my way out. That way it's not getting on me. Now, in this case, I realize I am going to kill some of these non-privet plants in here, that is okay. That is a management decision I have made. So we just start, we just spray. Make sure we're coating the leaves, right? On these larger plants, you gotta make sure you really get the leaves covered. Covering the privet, covering the privet. And then we back away so I'm not walking through the stuff I have already sprayed. Privet is easiest, in my opinion, to treat during the winter because, again, it's the only green thing out there. And you can spray it without worrying about killing any of the spring ephemerals, any of the other things that might be native and coming up in that area. Hopefully now you know how to identify privet. If you go outside, you will probably see it all over the place now. Take this video, take your knowledge, show your friends, show your neighbors, and together we can work to get rid of privet. Clean up our forests and have healthy forests. If you have more questions, please contact your local extension agent, your local state forestry commission, and together we can win the battle against Privet.